Coffee Break French, Season 3, Episode 40. Salut tout le monde et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome to Coffee Break French and to this final episode in this season of our show. This entire season has been based on texts read by Alf, Veronica and Katie, three fictitious students studying in a language school in Nice. And over the past few lessons, we've been testing your knowledge of the constructions, the grammar and the vocabulary covered in these lessons. Hopefully, these lessons have been useful to you in helping you consolidate the language that you've learned in the course. And you can find out at the end of this show how you can get further practice on this language. Okay, let's get straight on with today's show. So your first phrase for translation is At the time, I wasn't yet married. I'll say that again. At the time, I wasn't yet married. So the expression here, the key expression, is at the time. And in French that becomes at the epoch. À l'époque. À l'époque. I wasn't yet married. Now you're describing a state of not yet being married. So which tense will we be using here? It's the imperfect tense we need to use. So with the imperfect tense, I wasn't yet married. Let's do I wasn't married. Je n'étais pas marié. Je n'étais pas marié. So if I'm male, I spell marié, M-A-R-I-E acute. And if I'm female, M-A-R-I-E acute, E. Marié. Je n'étais pas marié. Était being the imperfect tense of être. E acute, T-A-I-S. Je n'étais pas marié. But if we want to introduce the idea of not yet being married, then we need to use the word encore. Encore. Encore means yet in this situation, or it can also mean again. So, à l'époque, je n'étais pas encore marié. À l'époque, je n'étais pas encore marié. Okay, number two. I'd like you to translate this idiomatic expression. I've got a lot on my plate. And see if you can remember the expression used in French for to have a lot on one's plate. I have a lot on my plate. I'll give you a clue. It's got something to do with bread. Now, this phrase should take you back to when Alf was talking about his daughter and her new twin children, twin babies. And he said, she has got quite a lot on her plate. She's got her work cut out for her sometimes, and we we could say in English. The expression in French is avoir du pain sur la planche or sur sa planche. Literally, to have bread on the board, or to have bread on one's board. So, Alf said of his daughter, Elle a du pain sur sa planche. So, in answer to the translation challenge, I have a lot on my plate, or I've got my work cut out, I would say, J'ai du pain sur ma planche. Or, indeed, J'ai du pain sur la planche. Either would work here, depending slightly on the context. J'ai du pain sur ma planche. Okay, numéro 3. I'd like you to translate 
It's Florence who has convinced me to come. It's Florence who has convinced me to come. Okay. It's Florence. C'est Florence who has convinced me. So we've got to put the me before the has convinced. Qui m'a convaincu. Convaincre, we saw in the last episode. Qui m'a convaincu. And it's convaincre quelqu'un de faire quelque chose. So, c'est Florence qui m'a convaincu de venir. Now, we need to ask ourselves, who is the me here? Who is the me? If it's a female, me, then that becomes, using the preceding direct object rule, qui m'a convaincu with an e on the end. Convaincu ending u-e. But if the me is a male, then it's just convaincu with an U on the end, no E. So, c'est Florence qui m'a convaincu de venir. Numéro 4. I'll keep you posted on the house. As in, I'll keep you posted about developments with the house. I'll keep you posted on the house. Okay, I'll keep you posted. To keep someone posted is tenir quelqu'un au courant. To hold someone on the current. Again, that's something that we've seen in recent lessons. So, I will keep you posted. Je vous tiendrai au courant. Or, je te tiendrai au courant. And tiendrai is the future tense of tenir. Tenir being the verb to hold. Tiendrai, it conjugates like venir. So, je te tiendrai au courant, or je vous tiendrai au courant. And to translate about the house, then you would say for the house in French. Je te tiendrai au courant pour la maison. Or, je vous tiendrai au courant pour la maison. So, I'll keep you posted about the house. Je vous tiendrai au courant pour la maison. Okay, number five. And this is another one about the house. And it's a little more tricky this time. I am trying to renovate the house before she arrives. I'm trying to renovate the house before she arrives. Translate that into French. Okay, so I'm trying to renovate the house. That's straightforward enough. J'essaie de rénover la maison. To renovate, rénover. And j'essaie is spelled E-S-S-A-I-E. E-S-S-A-I-E. J'essaie de, essayer de faire quelque chose. J'essaie de rénover la maison before she arrives. Well, before is avant. And in this situation, we've got a second subject here. I am trying to renovate the house before she arrives. So it's before that she arrives subjunctive. Avant qu'elle arrive. Arrive is the same in the subjunctive and the indicative. In French, it's a regular ER verb. So avant qu'elle arrive. However, there's something else that we need to remember in formal French about avant que. It's the fact that there's a little n in there. It has no negative meaning, but it just goes along with the avant que expression. 
So, in actual fact, the correct way of saying this would be J'essaie de rénover la maison avant qu'elle n'arrive. Avant qu'elle n'arrive. En apostrophe, arrive. Now, just on that point, let's think of another way of saying this expression. I am trying to renovate the house before she arrives. We could change it to make it avant son arrivée, before her arrival. Son, S-O-N, arrivé, the noun. A-R-I-V-E, acute E. Avant son arrivée. J'essaie de rénover la maison avant son arrivée. And that is where we are going to leave this episode. And indeed, this series. Now, for our premium members, they will be listening on to five more examples to translate into French. And they'll also have the dictation exercise. If you'd like to become a premium member, then you can do so by visiting coffeebreakfrench.com. Scroll down the page, find the materials for Season 3, and you can purchase them from that page. Now, there's also something else I'd like to tell you about. And that is the fact that we're going to be releasing in the next couple of weeks an addition pack, an extra pack of exercises associated with this course of Coffee Break French. This pack of add-on lessons, which will feature more translation challenges based on what you've learned in Coffee Break French Season 3, will be available in the next couple of weeks and we'll tell you all about it on Facebook and Twitter and indeed if you're part of our email list you'll receive an email about this as soon as it's ready. For the time being I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode and indeed joining us for the whole series of Coffee Break French Season 3. We'll be back again in the future with some more Coffee Break French but for now, merci beaucoup et à la prochaine This podcast was brought to you by the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at www.radiolingua.com.